So um, this is an example for the yield, percent yield calculations. The ethane, the question says that ethene is a hydrocarbon. It can be combusted in oxygen according to the equation below to C2H6 plus O2. Uh, actually, I have balanced this one too. For CO2 plus six water molecule. And it's asked that if 60 grams ethane is combusted to produce 22 grams of the carbon dioxide, what is the percentage yield in the reaction? If we have given the molecular mass for the C2H6, which is equal to 30, now it is asked us to calculate the percent yield. So this is how we are going to solve this question. You can pause the video and do it yourself and then check after that how if your answer is correct or not so we said that the percent yield the percent yield equals to um actual over theoretical times 100 actual the actual yield is what is given to you which is 22 grams in the question theoretical should be calculated What you need to calculate is the theoretical one. So let's calculate how many moles of the ethane we have. C2H6, the moles of the C2H6. So it be 16, which is the mass of the ethane over molecular mass, which is 13. 30, which is given to also become 0 0.533 mole of the C2 has six. Now you have to consider the mole ratio. In the mole ratio, we said, you see that each ethane molecule, each one ethane molecule has two CO2. And now, Actually, it is two and four, but I make it simple, so I do not write two or four. So the mole ratio become one, two for easier calculation. So it means that now, if I have this much mole of the C two H six, which is 0 0.33, 0 0.533, so how many moles of the CO two it will have at the end? So the moles of the CO two equals to 0 0.533 times 2 divided by 1. The answer will be 1.066 moles of CO2. Now, we know the molar mass of the CO2. Now we can calculate the number of the grams, the mass of the CO2. So the mass of CO2 will be um, 44, that's 1, so it becomes 0, 1. Uh, 0, 066 times 44 and the answer will be 46.904 grams CO2 now we have the grams of the CO2 carbon dioxide which is our theoretical yield this is our theoretical yield so now we need to substitute you have actual you have theoretical so percent yield equals to actual which is 22 and how much was the theoretical 46.904 times 100 equals to 46.9 percent so this is the percent yield of the equation we got another question, ammonia and H3 can be produced by the reaction below N2 plus 3H2, it gives to N3. 10 mole of H2 is reacted with excess N2 to produce 20.25 grams of the ammonia. So by knowing that the molecular mass of NH3 is equal to 17 grams per mole, you need to calculate the percent yield of this reaction. So the first thing is that we know the percent yield equals to actual over the theoretical times 100. So the actual is already given. 
This is the actual yield. What you are supposed to actually calculate here is the theoretical. The theoretical yield. So the first thing that you need to do is to define that um, you, you know already that the N2 is reacted with excess N2. So N2 is in excess. So what is a limit thing here is the H2. So it means that this is the H2 that defines our product, how, how much of the product will be gained or pro produced at the end. So we have nothing to do with the add to N2. And what, what we are going to do is just to look at the number of the moles and grams of the H2 here. So now let's find the number of the moles of the NH3, which is produced by 10 moles of the H2. So we said that the hydrogen is the limiting reagent. So we are, we are using that one to define the number of the moles of the NH3. So we said each three moles of the H2 in the reaction, um, the mole ratio is for between the H2 and H3 is 3 to 2. So it means that now if I have 10 moles of this, so how many moles of the NH3 will be produced? This one times this one divided by this one will be the answer. So N, the number of the moles of the common will be 10 times 2 divided by 3, which is 6.667 moles of NH3, which is produced here. Now we need to convert this one into grams. Now convert NH3 moles to grams of the NH3. In order to do that, we need to know that M equals to number of the moles times molecular mass, which is, I just substitute number of the moles, 6.667 times molecular mass should be 17. So, answer is 113.33 grams of NH3. Now we have the grams of each disease or theoretical yield. So I just substitute. I said we have actual yield. The actual yield is 20.25 20 grams over. The theoretical is 113.33 times 100. The answer is 17.87% yield. That's the answer. So another question, uh, you have to be careful. We have to know that if it is a limiting and excess reagents are defined for you. If they are not defined, you have, that's what you have to find it first. In this question, we do not know which one of the H2 and the O2 of the reactants are limiting and which one is uh, uh, in excess. So let's uh, read the question first. Water can be formed during the combination of hydrogen and oxygen as is shown below two hydrogen molecule plus O2. It gives two molecules of the water. If 30 grams of the oxygen and 3.5 grams of the hydrogen gas are combined to form 29 grams of the water molecule, what is percent, percent yield of this reaction? By knowing that the molecular mass of the oxygen is 32, Molecular mass of the H2 is 2. I already calculated for you. So you do not need to do that. But what you are supposed to first do is to know which one are defining the product, which one is the limiting or limiting re reactant, reagent. So in order to do that, you have to find mole and the mole ratios. So as you can see, for the hydrogen molecule, uh, for the hydrogen gas, uh, we have 3.5 grams and the oxygen is uh, 30 grams. So here we will have uh, 3.5 gram divided by the MR 3.5 divided by mass F1 uh, becomes 1.72 moles. And for the 30, for the oxygen, I write it down. I write it down so we have more space. So at 1.72 moles for the H2 and for the oxygen, 
for the oxygen, let's calculate. It comes 30 over 32, and the answer will be 0 0.9375 moles. Um, and but it is now because we the mole ratios between the hydrogen and oxygen is two to one. So this one needs to be divided again. So becomes that for the oxygen yield becomes so if we divide it by the two it becomes 0 0.86 and this one is the same 0 0.9375 so this one is smaller than this one so that's the hydrogen is limiting reagent limiting reagent and oxygen is the agent in which is in excess so now we found out which one defines the product that's the hydrogen defines the amount of product so now we don't have anything to do with the oxygen anymore now in order to calculate the theoretical year we have to know how much in grams of water is produced so we say that the number of the moles of the hydrogen was 1.75 and because the mole ratio between the water and the hydrogen is one to one so the number of the moles for the water also will be 1.75 now i have to convert this one into grams of h2o so in order to do that we have to take the mole 1.75 times the molar mass of the h2o which is already given and it is um, 18. so this one if you calculate will be actually this will be 31.50 grams so now you have to just lock, lock in the into the equation and the actual, as it was given, is 29 divided by theoretical, which is 31.50 grams. And if you do the calculations uh, times 100, finally, it should be something around 95.93 percent. Um, that's it. If you have gained a different thing, please let me also know. Um, so that's it. Um, in some, for example, cases, you have multi-step synthesis. For example, it says that A gives B and then B gives C and the C gives D. And each of them, the percent yield is given to you individually. For example, this one 80%, this one 50%, and this one is 50% yield of this pro step of the process. So there are three steps, one, two, three steps in this process. If you want to calculate the total yield of the whole process, then you have to 100 times each of these ones, 0 0.80 times 0 0.50 times 0 0.50. That will be your overall yield of the whole 30 step, three step process. Okay, but now imagine that the multi-step process is like this, that A, for example, gives B and then C, but after that D uh, gives, produces E, and then C plus E overall gives F. I mean, so same, uh, you have two linear sequences here, and uh, for example, if I want to write it again, these sequences are A gives B, then gives C, and finally F, and another sequence says that D gives A, and E actually resulted into F. So we have two separate sequences. In this kind of the cases, you have to look at the longest linear equation, for example, here is here. And this is, um, you by considering this one, you need to calculate the overall yield of the longest linear equation only. So you do not consider this one in the yield calculations.
There is one example here about the Malthus step process and how to calculate the percent yield. Aspirin is formed in a Malthus step process form from a substance called sodium phenoxide. There is a one, there is a one one ratio of sodium phenoxide reacted to aspirin produced. MR or the molecular mass of the aspirin is equals to 180 grams per mole and the molecular mass of the sodium phenoxide is 116 grams per mole. The process consists of three steps. The overall yield of the first step is 90%, second 80% and third 98%. Calculate mass in tons of aspirin that would be formed from one ton of sodium phenoxide. So you can pause the video and you can write down the uh, question and then because I want to wipe off the word and write the calculation. So if you remember, we said that the total yield is calculated by this total yield equals to because we have three, uh, three steps and yield of which is given differently. So one, 0 0.8 times 0 0.9 times 0 0.98 and times 100 and it gives us 70.6 percent which is the overall yield the moles of the number of the moles for the sodium phenoxide equals to uh, mass is given in ton so each one ton equals to 1 million grams I convert to gram because this is the standard you need to work out. So the molecular mass is given as 116 gram per mole. So by dividing this one over this one becomes 8621 mole of the sodium phenoxide we have. And we know that the mole ratio uh, between the sodium phenoxide and the aspirin is 1 to 1. So the number of the moles also for the aspirin will be 8, 6, 2, 1 moles. Okay, so now, we know that the yield of this product overall is 70.6%, so it means that if I times this one by 0 0.706, I will have 6.086 uh, moles, uh, which is formed here of the aspirin and mass of the aspirin calculations mass of the aspirin will be number of the moles 6.086 now based on the percent yield overall percent yield it becomes 0 0.6 as uh, 0.086 uh, times 180 becomes 1 0 0.95517 grams of the aspirin. So I come, it's asking us to mention this one, uh, the amount of the aspirin produced, not in grams, but also in tons. So we have to convert the convert to tons. So converting tons become 1.095517 tons of aspirin. This is the answer. So next question. This is another question. 45.2 grams of iron metal reacts with excess oxygen gas to produce 58.1 grams of Fe3O4. You need to find first the theoretical year, then you have to find the percent year, and then you have to uh, by knowing, for example, imagine that you, this reaction was 70% efficient, so how much would be the actual yield of the Fe3O4? Um, by knowing that the molecular mass, uh, molecular, mole, uh, mole, atomic mass of the Fe, I think, uh, yes, the molecular mass of the Fe3O4 is 55.84 gram per mole. So now the first thing, this first step, you have to write the equation and you have to balance it. So let's see, we have got Fe iron plus oxygen gas, which produces Fe3O4. So if I want to balance, I need to put one two coefficient here. 
three here and also one here. So now the next point, the next and uh, the next step, you have to find the number of the moles of each. As you know that the Fe is in the limiting region, so that defines the overall yield or the product. So this one is not considered into the calculation. So for the Fe becomes 45.2 grams divided by 55.85 gram per mole equals to number of the moles of the Fe over all 0 0.8, 10 uh, moles of the Fe. So number of the moles of the F equals to this much. By knowing the mole ratio, each um, F E, each three mole of E gives F E three O four one. So the mole ratio is three one. Now I have this much mole of the F E. How many moles of the F E three O four does it give to me? So it becomes this one times this one divided by three. So it becomes zero point. 810 divided by 3. The answer would be 0 0.270 moles of Fe304. Moles of Fe304. Now, at the next step, We have the moles. Now we have the molar mass. And you can easily find out the mass of the Fe3 or 4 in grams. Uh, sorry, that one was the so the atomic mass. That one was the atomic mass of the uh, Fe, which is 55.84. I did this correction here. So atomic mass of the Fe was 55.84 so now we not we need to find the molecular mass of the fe3 or 4 so here equals 2 we have is 3 times 55.85 plus 4 times 16 the answer will be 231.55 gram per mole is the molecular mass of the Fe304. Okay, in the next step, we say we can easily calculate the mass of Fe304, which is equals to m times mr, so equals to 0 0.270, which is the number of the mole of this compound, times 231.5, 55 which is gram per mole it is the molar mass of this compound and overall the num the amount of the, the mass of the fe304 will be 62.5 grams it is step five we need to work out the percent yield percent yield equals to a actual over the theoretical times 100 so the actual here is uh was 58 grams which is given in the question and the theoretical is what you have gained here which is 62.5 grams well times 100 the answer will be 93 percent this is the yield the next part the last part says that imagine that the Percent yield is 75% efficiency. So how much is the yield of the Fe304 if the efficiency is 75%? So we say that the, if, if, if uh, the efficiency is 100%, we will have 62.5 grams of the Fe304. Okay, now if it is 75%, we should, we should have 62.5 times 0 0.75 equals to 46.91 gram of Fe304. That's the answer here. Let's go to the next question. The question is this. 
30 grams of C3H8 burns in air to produce 70 grams of the CO2. You need to calculate the theoretical and percent yield of the carbon dioxide. So the theoretical yield is asked you, and also the percent yield of this uh, of the CO2. The first thing you have to write the uh, balanced equation. So if I want to write the balanced equation, we know that the C3H8 plus O2 it gives CO2 is a combustion reaction as well as H2O. But it's not balanced. In order to balance it, I need to put one, uh, I put three here, I put five here, and I put four here. And this is one. Oxygen will be in excess because so uh, it's not considered into our calculations. So we look at the C3H8 to calculate the amount of the product. Here is carbon dioxide. A step two is the theoretical um, yield of the carbon dioxide in grams. So we have to find first the mole of each, convert each one to mole. Uh, C3H8 into moles becomes 30 grams divided by 44 gram. We will have 0 0.682 moles of the uh, C3H8. This is the moles of C3H8. But I want the moles of the CO2 now. The moles of the CO2. By knowing this one, I can calculate moles of the CO2 by just knowing the mole ratio. The mole ratio between C3H8 and the CO2 is one three. So what should I do? Easily, you just come here to times this one times three equals to. Um, the answer will be two point two point zero four five moles of the CO two carbon dioxide. So I have moles of carbon dioxide now. The next one is we have to convert the moles of the carbon dioxide into grams of carbon dioxide. So when you found out the moles of it, now you convert it into grams of the carbon dioxide. The grams of carbon dioxide becomes of the carbon dioxide equals to number of the moles times molecular mass of the CO2, which is, I just substitute number of the moles 2.045, we already calculated, times 44 grams of the carbon dioxide. Now, the answer will be 19, 90 grams of the CO2 we have here. The percent yield calculation equals to actual over theoretical times 100. I just substitute again. So actual, which is 70, 770 seven over 90 times 100, which is the answer equals to 77.7% .7 yield of So another question. Nitrogen gas can be prepared by passing gaseous uh, ammonia over solid copper two oxide at high temperature. The other products of the reaction are solid copper and water vapor. If a sample containing 18.1 grams of NH3 is reacted with 90.4 grams of CuO copper oxide, you need to first find limiting reagent and then the second part you need to find how many grams of the uh, nitrogen gas is formed at the end. So by knowing that the molecular mass of the N2 is 28 and NH3 is 17.04. So you may write down the question because I want to wipe off the board. So as usual, at the first step, you need to write down the equation and then you need to balance it. So the equation is NH3 plus CuO, it gives N2 gas, plus 
copper plus water in liquid. Low ochre is in gas and the copper is in solid form and nitrogen in gas. Copper oxide is solid and NH3 is in gas. So let's see how to balance two, three, one, three, three. Now this is balanced. The second step, you have to find the moles of the NH3 and CuO. So I have the grams of it because I want to define the limiting reactants, reagents. So what should I do? This one is 18.1 gram over 17.03. So it becomes 1.06 moles. The number of the moles of the CuO is 90.4 divided by the molecular mass, which is 79.55. The answer will be 1.14 moles of the copper oxide. You have to find the mole ratio, which is 2, 3. You should convert the moles of the NH3 to the moles of the CO. You can do that. So to know how many moles of the CO is required to react with the NH3. So you can do this. This is one of the ways to know how much, how, which one is the reactant, which is what is limiting, which one is excess. So what you do is that for NH3, you should put 1.06 times 3 divided by 2. This one becomes 1.59 moles. 1.59 moles of the CO is needed. But here, in reality, it should be this. But we have 1.14 moles, actually. So this shows that the CuO, because 1.14 is quite less than 1.59, so the copper oxide here, the copper it shows that the copper oxide is limiting reagent, and this one is in excess. So that's the copper oxide that defines the number of the moles of the product which is formed. So we already calculated the number of the moles for the CuO which was 1.14 mole. Now we want to know how many moles of the nitrogen is and then we should know the molar ratio between these two, the mass rate, the mole ratio of the copper oxide and the nitrogen, so it is 3 and 1. We said now it's in 3, each 3 mole gives 1 mole of the nitrogen. Now we have 1.14, how many moles of the nitrogen it will give us? So N of the N2 equals to 1.14 times 1 divided by 3. So the answer will be 0 0.38 moles of N2. We have moles of N2 when we need the grams of the nitrogen. Uh, so we say the grams of it equals the number of the moles of the N2 times its molar mass. If you do the calculation, it becomes 0 0.38 times 28. So the answer will be 10.6 grams of nitrogen is produced. The next part says how much of the reactant is left over. If you want to know how much of the reactant is left over, this is how you do that. Then the reactant which is left over, of course, this is the one which is in excess and it was in the NH3 that was in excess, excess region. So that's what we have to gain. We say that every two moles of NH3 gives one mole of the nitrogen gas. So now, um, so by knowing this, we know that the moles of the NH3 is 1.062. So we want to how much N2 is produced by this. So it becomes 1.062 divided by 2 equals 1, 0 0.53. 11 moles of the N2. Actually, we should have this much of the product if we have this much of the uh, NH3. So 
so this one yeah the mole the mole of it is was already calculated the mole of it we know how to because we have the molar mass is 17.04 so now we know that the product actually should be this much but practically what we have gained is, is this much if we deduct these two from each other it becomes 0 0.152 moles of m2 it means that this much this much moles of the n2 is not being reacted now so this much mole of the n2 is not being made in order to make this much of the n2 convert to the moles of the nh3 it means that 0 0.1 Five two times two. It means that zero point three zero four moles of an H three is not reacted. It means how many grams you want to convert into grams becomes zero point three zero four times. 17.04 equals to 5.180 grams of the NH3 is not actually reacted and is remained in the reaction into the vessel. Now, the next part of this question is asking us to calculate if we now, for example, if I obtain 9 gram of the nitrogen gas, you should calculate the percent yield and the percent error. I have added some another part to this question. So I write the question first and um, next part of the question and then answer it. Now we say now, if you imagine that you have obtained 9 gram of the nitrogen gas, you need to uh, calculate the percent yield and percent error. It's just for you to practice and um, actually recall the formula first the percent yield if you remember is actual over the theoretical times 100 so the actual yield here is 9 the theoretical was 10.6 that's what we have calculated 10.6 now times 100 it will be 84 0.91 percent yield now the percent error equals to a minus t or t times 100 so i just substitute percent error equals to actual minus theoretical over theoretical times 100 equals to 15.1 0.9% of product is lost. This much percent of the product is lost. This is the next question. We have 50 grams of the vanadium, which is mixed with 50 grams of the ozone or tree to make 65 grams of the vanadium 5 oxide. Find a theoretical yield. The second part, percent yield. Find the percent yield. And number three, how much vanadium 5 oxide will be produced if the process is 90% efficient? By knowing that, the atomic mass of the vanadium is 50.94 grams per mole, and the atomic mass of the oxygen is 16 grams per mole. So I clean the board and start answering the question from part one to the last part. So the first thing is that what is the formula of the vanadium 5 oxide so vanadium 5 means that the uh the charge of the ion is positive 5 and the oxygen also has a minus so minus 2 so if we swap the numbers the formula of this compound will be v2o5 so this is the vanadium 5 oxide the next part you have to write down the equation the equation says that the V vanadium plus O3, which is ozone, it gives V2 
for five vanadium oxide. Now we need to balance. So we should put six in front of E vanadium and five in front of the O3 and three in front of the V2O5. Now this is balance. Now you have to define which was a limiting and which one is an excess. So in order to find out that, what we have to do is that we know the mole ratios six to five between the uh, vanadium and the oxygen. The molar mass and the mass of each is 50 over 50.94. The answer will be 0 0.981 mole. And here we have uh, 50 over 16. So the answer, if you work this out, we will be having uh, we will be having three points, if not mistaken. So but now imagine that we have this much of if we have this much of the uh, ozone, this much more, and with this kind of the ratio. So we know that the vanadium moles, the moles for the vanadium is 0 0.981. Okay, so I clean this board. So you imagine that we have this small ratio. And if we have this much more of the ozone, actually how many moles of the vanadium we need actually here to have 100% yield. In order to do that, and we, if you do the calculation, this one times this one divided by this one, which is 5, 3.125 times 6 divided by 5, the answer will be 3.75 moles we need. But actually, we only for the vanadium, uh, we have 0 0.981 moles. So you see that it is not enough. The moles of the vanadium actually is not enough to have 100% yield. So this one, we understand that the vanadium, vanadium is a limiting region and the oxygen will be excess region. So oxygen is not considered into the finding, the calculating the amount of the product. That's what we consider is vanadium. Now let's calculate the theoretical yield. Theoretical yield, um, it means that for each vanadium, we have 0 0.981 moles of it. We give V2O5. Each six moles of the vanadium produces three moles of this V2O5 based on the equation. So if you have now this much of vanadium, this much moles, so how many moles of the this will have? Number of the moles equals to 0 0.981 times 3 divided by 6. The answer will be 0 0.491 moles of the V2O5. This is the theoretical yield, but it is in moles. Now you have to convert into grams. In gram equals to 0 0.491 times the molecular mass of the V2O5, which is 181.88 equals to 89.212 grams of the vanadium 2 5 this much grams so the next part of the question is asking us to calculate the percent yield so this is the formula for the percent yield we need to just substitute we have actual which is 65 over theoretical we have calculated which is 89.212 times 100 equals to 72.8% is the efficiency. Now, the next part says, if 90% efficient, how much would be the actual yield? So we said, okay, we have 0 0.9 times theoretical equals to actual yield, if it is 90%. 9 over 100 to become 90 over 100 to become 0 0.9 and instead of writing 9 90 over 100 so they just substitute 0 0.9 times the theoretical which is 89.212 the answer will be 
point twenty nine grams of V two O five. This is our actual yield. And um, this is the answer of the question that we have uh, actually written before. So these are the examples for the yield calculation. And when you have, uh, you are given the equation, you have to find out the mole or the mass of the, each of the rectangle and how to find out the limiting and the excess reactants. And these are the practices that we have done and the exercises that we have done and some examples that I have worked out. Hope you have understood very well. In the next video, we are going to uh, talk about the reacting masses and the volume of the gases and how to calculate them and how to find. I just provide some example for you and hope it is helpful and uh, will be use useful for you. Thank you. See you again.